Jesus was way cool. Everybody liked Jesus. Everybody wanted to hang out with him. Anything he wanted to do, he did. He turned water into wine. And if he wanted to, he could have turned wheat into marijuana, or sugar into cocaine, or vitamin pills into amphetamines. He walked on the water and swam on the land. He would tell these stories and people would listen. He was really cool. If you were blind or lame, you just went to Jesus and he would put his hands on you and you would be healed. That's so cool. He could have played guitar better than Hendrix. He could have told the future. He could have baked the most delicious cake in the world. He could have scored more goals than Wayne Gretzky. He could have danced better than Barishnikov. Jesus could have been funnier than any comedian you can think of. Jesus was way cool. He told people to eat his body and drink his blood. That's so cool. Jesus was so cool. But then some people got jealous of how cool he was, so they killed him. But then he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead, danced around, and went up to heaven. I mean, that's so cool. Jesus was way cool. No wonder there are so many Christians.
hello, 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 hello. Are you well? Are we well? Are we mentally capable of going on this journey? Not ending up in a gurney? Welcome back to F A Radio. That was a pretty good opening. Song called Jesus was way cool. And then the second song was uh, by my friend Lizzie Bugatus with her band IUD, and that song was 911, Lizzie Bugatus of Gang Gang Dance. But here we are, I'm back in the seat, and you're hearing me speak. Hello, welcome back, here we are. I always think it's funny when, not funny, but it's interesting when, when comedians come out and they say, how y'all doing? And everybody's like, yeah. And then they say, how's everybody doing? Yeah. I think it's weird, it's a strange question. You're not, you're not, you're not actually being on, you're not actually, you don't care how these people are doing. I, but I, you're, you're trying to read the crowd. Yeah, but I, I I don't like that. Like, what's up? I think I think I'm I think I'm pretty much. I think I'm pretty much done with hearing. Um, Let's go, and yes, sir. I'm I'm pretty fucking done hearing that from anybody. Let's go. Yes, sir. Again, why do I always feel so like I'm so loud? I'm not loud. No. Hello. Stupid American. I am a stupid American. I talk loud in public spaces. I don't travel to other places. Of course, my dad was racist. Stupid American. Um... My father wasn't racist, he was just a con artist. Which is better in the grand scheme of things if you're gonna, you know, wear it out. I hope you all liked the last episode. Mr. Caswell, the producer here, he really took an onslaught of videos I sent this time. I really went deep for the last episode, as I did with this episode, just staying up till four in the morning and looking for just obscure visuals and whatnot, and I really appreciate Mr. Rye uh, Barras hitting me up and telling me uh, that he liked the visuals. That's always so cool to hear from people that they really like the videos and <clears throat> whatnot. And if you listen to this and you don't um, watch, well, thank you as well. That's totally cool. But, uh, yeah, the last episode I felt was really great, but then YouTube took down the song... Uh, Cavern by Liquid Liquid. And that was a bummer. It bums me out because when I'm doing this thing, I, I think, like, you know, the whole process of going through the thing and, like, me sitting here and us listening to the music, you know, with you basically while we're doing this is like, it's such a thing to tie it all together. And then when one thing gets cut, it's like, fuck. We're not even trying to sell anything. <laughs> Just trying to play this music so you hear it and maybe you like it and then you tell your friend you ever heard this fucking song it's fucking crazy and then all of a sudden you're fucking doing yoga to black lips or whatever <laughs> yeah 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 but it's nice to be back nice to be back in the studio doing the show hanging out with all you people 
put them as we as we do as we will let's uh let's find let's find some music for you guys to listen to oh i'm in the wrong zone i'm in the wrong zone listen to tom jones on the vegas strip nothing's hip You guys ever gone fishing? Definitely. Um, Hanson Dam. Where did you live? What state did you live in? Wisconsin. Right. I never fished there. No. But I saw people do the whole um, like shanty thing. Like they have the whole huts on ice. Like cars are driven out on the Oh, ice. yeah, 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 that yeah. That shit is fucking crazy. Right. I've never... Um, I've never fished. I've yeah. never I've never fished before. So so therefore I've never caught a fish. You that's that's that. really deep. Trout dill? No. You know about trout dill stage? No. But no, I never I never I never caught a fish. Alright, let's get you back into the music aquarium and I shall return. Shortly.
I've got the Silver Machine by Hawkwind. Wow, we really, really rock centric program we got going on tonight. But yeah, that was, uh, we started off with uh, um, Dance with the Devil by a person named Cozy Powell. And then played Jimmy the Exploder by the White Stripes. And then we played Cass McCombs, Satan is My Toy. And then obviously Hawkwind. But I tell you, yeah, it, you would think if within doing the show, uh, if you didn't want your songs to get taken off, well, maybe you shouldn't play something like the White Stripes. But hopefully it doesn't get erased. But let me tell you, before... Before people knew who the White Stripes were, really, I would go to this bar in Cincinnati, Ohio, called The Comet. And it was just this little bar and uh, at the top of this hill. And I'd be staying with my friend Joe Castruzzi, who worked for Alien Workshop in Cincinnati. And... Uh, Comet was the bar. Comet was the bar we all went to. And in the, the jukebox, I'd, I'd never heard of the White Stripes. And in the jukebox, one time I had heard this song, th that song that I played, Jimmy the Exploder, and uh, I found out what it was. And so I played it again and again. I was like, man, this is cool. I really like this song. But, uh, but yeah, no one knew. No one knew of the White Stripes and... Obviously, they became what they became, and I think hopefully I don't uh, bite myself in the ass by playing a song that's going to get erased because of the uh, total popularity of the of the upset said band. So, if you're listening to this, um, if you are listening to this. That means that the eclipse didn't bring the rapture, as as, as predicted. But the, again, like being fearful of something along the lines of a rapture, like people have been saying the world's been ending for thousands of years. What's going to happen is we're all going to die, and there's going to be no one here. And then there'll be animals, and they, perhaps they'll all die. But the Earth's going to be fine. The Earth's going to be fine for, for a long time until a, a black hole or a, 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 the sun uh, uh, just swallows us. Not us, but the Earth. We pollute the Earth, and we fuck it up. And Man, we've done a good job, really good job, of just fucking the Earth up. We've done such a good job, like... The, all the plastic in the ocean and all of our masks from the pandemic ended up in the ocean. Like, we've done a stellar job as living creatures of just really fucking this place up. And so once nature absolves us and animals, well, the, the planet's going to keep spinning. The planet's going to be like, fucking finally. Jeez. Got rid of all these fucking assholes. Like, I can finally spin around in peace now. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Enough of those guys. And then more shit will sprout up from the surface because the things that create life float around in the, in the universe and then they land places like this with the right temperature and the right uh, carbon offset, whatever it is. Um, but yeah. I went to the... I, there's a coffee shop that's very close to where I'm staying in, in Los Angeles and, and I walked in today and, and there's a very nice woman at the coffee shop that's always very uh, talky and cordial with me and she said, do you want to see the eclipse? And I said, I, I, don't, I don't know how to. And she said, here, I got the glasses for it. And so while they were making my coffee, I went outside and there it was. 
about, I don't know, about a good, like, 35, 40% of the sun was being invaded by the moon's uh, trajectory. I just thought, wow, look at that. Look at that. And then I got on Twitter and just agreed with all the, the right-wing conservative Republicans and Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and all those people. And I was like, you guys are right. The apocalypse is coming. I'm super scared. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go hide in my room. I'm never going to masturbate again. Jesus was so cool. <laughs> Jesus was cool. Jeez, the idea of Jesus and the, and, the, and the teachings of Jesus and what I've read out of the Bible is 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 super as that song in the beginning said it was super cool but most people most people don't follow the teachings of Jesus they they follow the teachings of uh, who knows what they follow I don't fucking know I don't know I tell you tonight I'm really all of, why are you guys doing sign language what's going on he wants me to kill this mosquito. He wants me to do that. Well, sorry. There's death on, death on the airways. What was that horrendous song? That was big for a second. It's murder on the dance floor. Oh but you God. better not kill the groove. <laughs> I remember being in Australia, and that song was fucking gigantic. And everywhere you went, that song would be playing. It was, it was almost as bad as. Now you have to understand, being in New York, Alicia Keys, sure, like good for her, like totally cool. But when that fucking New York, New York song came oh out in God. New York, oh man, you just couldn't escape it. It was like a plague of locusts. Like you just couldn't. You go to the deli, you fucking be in a taxi. New, let's hear it for just over and over. Fuck. Oh, speaking of that, um, I really don't mean to do these things when I link shit together. Totally by accident. But <clears throat> I did write this down. So violence is, is, um, violence is, uh, is, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very real aspect of life. And it's, it's, it's luckily for a lot of people, they get around experiencing violence in life and and, and um, the unfortunate people that are experiencing violence in, in life it, it, that's fucking obviously very uh, unfortunate and traumatic but man I watched this video and it's filmed it's strange how it's filmed because it's filmed really well so it doesn't seem like it's a security footage but it seems to be f filmed from the the second or third floor of a building in New York on a corner. <coughs> Excuse me. And they look like they're in Midtown. <clears throat> and this dude walking down the street just starts punching this woman, like fucking punching her in the face, like really fucking gnarly. Like boom, like gets two in on her. And then these young dudes come up and they just beat the fuck out of this dude. Nice. And it just, just felt good. It just was like, yes, fuck you. Like, super fuck you. Like, you just hit a random woman on the street twice in the head. And these dudes came along and like, wait, what? Motherfucker, boom. And just yeah. bang, 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 bang. Like, they fucked him up. It was so, and that's a strange human uh, feeling of where violence is always bad, but then when you see something like that and you just say, yes, fuck you. Like, that's a really, it's a really strange uh, feeling of, of that adulation that you get from, from someone getting instant karma, just instant delivery. Like, oh, you're going to do that? Check this out. <laughs> it's fucking rad. Man, I like that. I tell you what, I do not know. And you guys, whoever listening, like, I don't mean to do this on some like, oh, I'm being mysterious. I don't know what I'm going to play next. I did such a bad job of 
like when, basically in the if you've listened to all the shows, no pressure. Um, but if you've listened to all the shows, in the beginning of of doing FA Radio again after many years, it was easy to to not easy, but, but it was easy enough to come in here and be like, yeah, I'm gonna play Cass, I'll play Curtis Mayfield, I'll play Marvin Gaye, play this, play that, play some of my friends' music, play some some shit that's super near and dear to my heart. But what number are we on now? Nine. Now that we're eight weeks in, I'm having a hard time just skimming through the shit and just being like, oh, I'll play that. That sounds great. Now it's getting more like, fuck, I got to plan this shit out. And I'm not good at plans. But I'm saying I'm not, I'm not good at plans. I'm, I'm it's really, I'm really bad at, 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 at plans. Um, the, the, um, people, and this isn't a skateboard show. But Brian Lottie, who's an incredible skateboarder, just he did so, he just great style, great everything. I love Brian so much, and and uh, I talk to Brian now and then. And where I'm staying is close to him, and he hit me up on Friday saying like, "Hey, you want to grab lunch and maybe go play some bocce ball or whatever?" And I was like, "Man," like on Saturday, he told me on Friday, but maybe Saturday. I said, "Man, I'm such a loner nowadays," and. I, I, I'm so bad at making plans. Like, that sounds cool. And I'll let you know if I'm around. But I just was so touched that, like, one of my childhood heroes is like, hitting me up to go to lunch and play bocce. But I'm not, I'm not a person that goes to lunch. Yeah. I just eat when I... I like bocce ball, I might. Maybe it's a I... Game. It's hard. It's hard. I, I should hit Brian up and maybe... It's a nice game in the park. Right. But I'm just... I'm so bad at making plans. I'm so terrible at making plans. Yeah, so, you know, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just so happenstance with how I do things and meet up with people and whatever. But I, I always appreciate the invite. It's always nice. It's always nice to hear that you want to hang out with my dumb ass. But yeah, more music. Let's play this. Away. This girl is 
must provide transportation for students to go to and from school. The school did not provide transportation for to go to and from school. to get me to, to school and from school, but sometimes I had to walk home.
Ready? 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 You do want me, give me a little sugar. If you don't want me, don't leave me on your own. But if you need me, show me that you love me. And when I'm feeling blue, and I want you, there's just one thing that you should do. I just give me some kind of sign, girl. Oh, my baby, to show me that you're mine. Just give me some kind of sign, girl. Oh, 
Desmond Decker. I've heard that song before. I've heard that song before. Brent Wood. Yeah. Who said Desmond Decker? Oh, duh. <laughs> I'll play some Desmond later. But, um, yeah. Brent and Wood. Give me some kind of sign. And I repeated a song for the people who listen to all the, the episodes. I repeated it. I just, I really wanted to listen to that Flo and Eddie song again to keep it warm. So I repeated it. Don't crucify me. Hmm. Unprepared for tonight's festivities. But that's okay. That's okay. This is a funny question to you guys, but what's your, what's your, uh, I hate using the word celebrity because it's so corny, but you know, there's people that make music we like, there's people that play sports that we like, there's people that do great things and you see them in the wild and it's like, holy shit, I saw that person, like, I was with a very young Sage Elsesser. I think Sage was maybe 19 at the time. And um, I was living off Fairfax. It was probably like 2015 or 14. And um, there's a, a restaurant called Swingers. And above Swingers is a... It's, it's a motel, but it, it over time it kind of became kind of fancier than a motel, but they still kept the moniker of motel, and it's the Beverly Laurel. And I've stayed there plenty of times because I, I, I would stay there when I would visit from New York and whatnot, and it used to be cheap, and but then they got fancy and whatever, and good for them. But I was walking down the street with Sage, and we were going to Swingers, and I walk really fast. Like, I just, it's just my nature. I walk fast. And so I'm walking... And I passed the front of the Beverly Laurel driveway to go in, and then the restaurant we're going to, Swingers, below it. And Sage says, hey, Dill, don't freak out. I was like, what? I turn around, and Stevie Wonder is right behind me, right fucking behind me. And he's with what I assume family members and he has his hand on a man's shoulder on a man's shoulder that's kind of guiding him and uh, I assume it's like his three kids or whatever even though Stevie has like ten kids but uh and then there's a woman and they're all dressed up like super nice like they're all dressed up like they're going somewhere and uh, I turn around and Stevie Wonder's three feet away from me, and he's huge. He's like the Predator. Like, he's so gigantic. His head is fucking giant. Like, he's a huge person. And I have a tattoo of Stevie Wonder. I have the tattoo of uh, Hotter Than July on my stomach. Like, Stevie Wonder is 
he's everything to me. He's fucking everything to me. So I turn around and I just, this man walking by me just almost fainted. It's like, oh my God, there you are. Holy shit. And Sage and I experienced this moment together and it was just fucking, just the coolest shit. And in my head, I thought, why is he walking out? Like, this is Stevie Wonder. Like, why is he walking out of the Beverly Laurel Motor Inn that's become fancier in later years? Then we talked to Sage's mom later, who, who, who actually has met Stevie Wonder, because that family, the El Cesar family is magical. The, the El Cesar family is magical. They know everyone. That's important. And uh, she said, well, tonight's the... It, it was either the, the Motown Awards or the American Music Awards. So she said, well, they probably got him ready there at the motel, or which is a fancy place later. Uh, after I stayed there for many years, it being like $60 a night. Now it's like $300 a night. But that was that. And then there was the time... And again, I asked you guys, but I'll go back to it. But I'm just saying my time's like, I was getting tattooed by Dr. Wu at Shamrock, Mark Mahoney's place. And I was getting the Stevie Wonder tattoo. And I had to stand up the whole time for the tattoo and lean against this uh, thing that, that Wu basically had me lean against so my skin could get stretched the right way on my stomach for the... Steve Wonder tattoo, and it was gnarly. It was way down on my stomach, so it was so painful. And in the process of it, he'd be doing the tattoo, and I'd say, I need to take a break. I'm so sorry. And then I'd say to him, look, I'm going to take this break, and then I'll go, I will go 45 minutes and not take a break, I swear. And I would slap myself like, okay, fucking come on, let's do this. And so back in, he's like, vroom, 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 and it's getting way down by my pelvis. Like, oh my God, this is like electric, psycho, Africa hot pain. Like, fuck. And all of a sudden, because I'm looking down the whole time, just looking down, just trying not to fucking whatever. And then these Adidas appear in my peripheral. And these Adidas looked like they were made out of. I don't know, lambskin or something. They were just like fancy as fuck. And so I'm kind of looking to my side. I'm not trying to pay attention to the rest of the shop. I don't I don't particularly like getting tattooed in tattoo shops because it's so like... Mark Mahoney rules. Shamrock's a great place. But tattoo shops in general are like, look at my motorcycle, bro. Uh, uh, tough guy. It's like so tough guy. Like I love getting tattooed in like in a warehouse or whatever. I would never get a tattoo again. I can't believe I'm covered in all this stupid bullshit. It's insane. What the fuck is wrong with me? But at least I didn't get it on my forearms. But, uh, anywho. So, who did these Adidas belong to? I look up when the guy's close enough because I, I hear him say, Oh, mate. Stevie Wonder, Hotter Than July. That's such a good tattoo. And I look up to say, like, oh, yeah, hey, how you doing? It's fucking David Beckham. Shit. And I am a gigantic fucking fan of David Beckham. Like, sports in general, whatever. But I do love football, which is what they call soccer. I do love it. It's something magical about it, and it, it reminds me of skateboarding or whatever. And then David Beckham is just one of the best that ever fucking did it. And then I'm looking up at this man, and it might as well have been Princess Diana. He was so beautiful. So gorgeous. It was insane. He was fucking glowing, like, <laughs> ah. And I looked up. I was just going to answer some dude, like, yo, yeah, oh, cool, yeah, whatever. And I'm in pain. I'm getting needles punched into my pelvis. And I looked up, and I go, holy shit, you're David Beckham. I said it out loud. Holy shit, you're David Beckham. And this is before I worked for Adidas, so I could have had a, like, a nice conversation with him, but like, hey, we're, we're teammates. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he was so cool. He really was. He was the nicest dude. And he sat and talked with me, and he'd been tattooed by, by Dr. Wu plenty of times. So 
you know, woo, like, big me up, like, this is still, like, da, 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 all this stuff. I was like, no, 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 that's David Beckham. <laughs> like, I, like, thank you for trying to big me up to him and, like, tell him, like, I'm something in the skateboard world, but whatever. And then Beckham was like, no, 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 my kids love skateboarding and this and that and whatever. And he was just the nicest guy. But uh, what, what, what's your guys' seeing someone that, that you have held in a high regard? Is it any of that? Yeah. Yeah. Was, Great actor, total goofball. Yeah, like it was. It was just like the circumstance, like like you looking up and seeing him. Like I was chasing someone's board into the street, and I caught the board before he got to the car, and mm-hmm. like I come up to the window level, mm-hmm. and it's like him, like right face to face with me. He's In like, a car. Yeah, and we're like looking at each other, probably like five inches from each other's face, and I just like kind of stared at him. <laughs> I mean, dude, the the movie, the the the, the piano. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the the, 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 the pianist. Yeah, uh, that was what it, I thought it's about. It's insane. And then movie. and then uh, um, um, uh, uh, the the other one that's named after the train in India, the oh, the Anderson Wes Anderson one. What's yeah. that one called, Kyle? Kind of? Yeah, dude, he's yeah. good in that. Like. But then, but then you dig into to Adrian Brody early early two thousands hip hop. Adrian was, Brody, yeah. whoa! He was making beats during the pandemic. <laughs> no, we would see him at we would see him at nightclubs, in like early two thousand, like full like Puma outfits like and like trash like out. like just whoa! And I think he did a fucked up Sprite commercial, that was super hip hop and fucked up. Who else he got, Sage? It's Adrian Brody. The Beastie Boys. Like the three of them. How did you encounter all three of them? I I made my way onto like a rehearsal somehow. Like when I was a kid and my mom was just being like fucking cheerleader mom and was like, you gotta get a photo with these guys. And like, I'm so thankful she did. The photo's somewhere in her collection. Mm-hmm. But like, it's like the three of them with like a fucking bleached hair like version of me at like 10. Like, fucking geeked on it, you know. That was, like, when Intergalactic came out. With right. The, whole, the Hello Nasty album. Right. Which is, you know, it's not their greatest, but... No, it was a big moneymaker for them. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was... It was what I knew as a kid. Right, know? of course. And as a kid, to see that, it's great. Yeah, it was That's like, funny. Like, I, like, it would be hard to say that, like, that video didn't have a big influence on me. Right. So, like, that whole vibe. Right. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And My... I, you met fucking Evil Knievel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Total son of a bitch. Yeah. Complete fucking asshole. But what he did was incredible. Yeah, yeah. He seemed like he fucking... He didn't give a fuck about anything. He was out of his mind. Yeah, yeah. He, he, was, uh, he was old as fuck when I met him. But, yeah, that was crazy. He agreed. He was friends with a dude. And, and, and the dude proposed writing a book about him. And, uh... So Evil Knievel agrees... You can write the book about me. So the good, the dude goes super in depth and writes a bunch of shit that Evil didn't like, but he didn't read the book. So he agreed for the book to come out. <laughs> so the book comes out, and this friend of his that wrote the book all of a sudden is his nemesis and is like, "You motherfucker! You wrote that? You wrote about that in, in the book?" And the guy's like, "You." You let me write the book, and like I gave your people advanced copies and all this shit. So evil can evil. I hope I don't have the story wrong. I might have the story wrong, but who knows? He fucking goes after him, and this is I. I respect his jumps. I respect everything he did. It, I think he accelerated skateboarding by what he did. It's insane. And when I was a child, a child of the 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 late seventies, early nineties, like. Every, sorry, uh, late seventies, early eighties. Eva Knievel was everything. He was everywhere. Him, Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee, were fucking omnipresent. Uh, so he goes after this guy, and he finds him on the lot of like Warner Brothers or something shit like that, and he fucking confronted him with a baseball bat and he broke his he broke his arm. 
It's like, man, you're evil can evil. Like, use your fists. Like, don't. <laughs> and he went to jail for it. Yeah. He went to jail so for it. So I met it. him after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met, I met the dude Gator after, yeah, after he killed the That's chick. Crazy. I think it's for sure after he killed her because... Um, I, I don't mean to downplay that at all. That's terrible to say that chick or whatever, but I didn't know him. I didn't know her. I just was a kid sponsored in skateboarding. But I rode for a small company called Blockhead, and they were in a place called Bonsall, California. And it's in San Diego, but it, it's way removed from everything. Like the nearest the AMPM was like three miles away. Yeah. And uh, I was a little kid, so I'm not going to ask, like, the older dudes like give me a ride to AM PM like but that's what I lived off. I'd go to AM PM and get hot dogs and the shitty cheeseburgers and for fucking a dollar and whatever and then I'd go back to the house. But at the at the blockhead house, they had this really insane ramp, the blockhead ramp. So the pros from a bunch of different companies would come and skate that ramp. And I had gone to AM PM a couple miles away and then came back and you couldn't even skate there because the road was just so fucked up so I walked back up and um, I see a dude with the trunk of his car open on some like fucked like an IROC Z and that should already point out like the face of a, a dude that would kill a girl if they're driving an IROC Z in like 1991 but I'm walking up the driveway and there, there it is Gator and he turns around. I'm a little kid. I'm like 12 years old. And he says, hey, kid, do you want some Vision stickers? And Vision, at that what time, this is after Mark Gonzalez <laughs> left, so, like, I was no. obsessed with Gons. Like, no. So I just said, no, I, I write for Blockhead. And he said back to me, he goes, no, I write for Blockhead. Like, he mimicked me. No. And I thought, fuck that guy. And then only shortly after that, he turned himself in for the murder of that poor woman. That was insane. And then, th that's a terrible example, but whatever. Uh, I was eating at Lucky Strike in New York. We, we we get a lot of good ones at Lucky Strike in New York. I remember one time being at Lucky Strike. It's no longer there on, on Grand Street, just before West Broadway. But I remember walking in one time, and it was uh, Joel and Ethan Cohen um, at a table with Francis, Francis McDormand wow. in the back. And wow. it was like middle of the daytime, like 2 p.m., and they were like going over something. I thought, wow, that's cool. I and the, what? Keep going, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. But uh, <laughs> another time, me and my friend Dave were, were, were sitting at a table where it's, they have certain tables that are just for two people, and then next to us was a table for four people, and we were already eating, and... All of a sudden, Aaron Neville walks in with three other people, and he's head to toe, hat, jacket, this is in the wintertime, pants, boots are all like, what's it called? The, the kind of leather, like bovine leather, like that tan color, like I could smell it. Wow. And he sat right next to me, fucking Aaron Neville, and I'm smelling his leather. That was insane. Like, and if you don't know who Aaron Neville is, I'll try to remind you with like, I don't know much, but I know I love you. That guy, fucking Aaron Neville. That was amazing. That was really incredible. And then being in New York, like, you know, you would just, I saw Lou Reed at an AA meeting. That was pretty fucking insane like holy shit there's Lou Reed and he was old he was like really old I'd see Bjork at Max Fish that was cool she'd be there in the daytime uh, that was really cool I forget who I, I thought I thought I, I thought I thought but I didn't think I thought the thing I thought but I, I'm forgetting one that's kind of funny but do you have any more Sage Fucking shit you not. Courtney Love and uh, Mike Judge. 
just in a booth talking together. And oh, I, that's a weird combination. I just looked over and I'm like staring at the two of them. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Courtney Love and Mike Judge are talking to each other. And Courtney Love's a horrible, horrible Terrible. person. Yeah. And I have a friend that was was really close with Kurt Cobain and the the it, it, the initials of his name is not CD. It's a different person, uh, but he told me plenty, plenty about Courtney Love. Like, oh man, she's and you watch any interview of her, she God, she sucks. Not to judge, I I hate that I judge someone I don't know, but based on the information that this person's given me, and then my own fucking brain and fucking eyes like fuck her what a fucking horrible person oh shit one time speaking of, one time I fucking went to dinner so my friend Shelby was Radiohead's PR uh, uh, person for America and um, they did this this is also linked to the Beastie Boys they did a, a like a they, they would um, this is how I met Matt Sweeney uh, who's a dear friend, he's epic, Matt Sweeney's the fucking guitar phenom and linked to so many different epic things. Um, they did a, a, a company that represented a music artist called Nasty Little Man. I believe it was through the Beastie Boys and Shelby and, and Sweeney worked there. But um, one time, not related to this, but I'll bring it back to it, uh, Shelby said, hey, meet me for dinner and it was close to where I lived on Canal Street Broadway and Canal and I said yeah sure so I go to meet her for dinner she don't tell me I fucking sit down for dinner and it's just me her and 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 uh, my friend Mikey and uh, Dave Grohl and uh, Taylor Hawkins Jeez. so we're just eating dinner with them and I thought oh wow like that that's a dude that was in Nirvana I don't know, I don't listen, I don't know nothing. And again, this is the year 2000. Yeah. I don't listen to Foo Fighters, like, good for them, like, whatever. But I'm like, well, this guy was in Nirvana, that's fucking, yeah. <laughs> that's gnarly. And so I wasn't fanning out at all. I kind of, I think, not I think, looking back, but I, I know looking back, it was like, y you're not that cool. You're Now you're Foo Fighters guy, like, that's not that cool to me. Which is lame. But I was young, I was, what, 22? Um... But I remember thinking, like, well, this guy was in Nirvana. He was there for the thing. Like, that, that's really fucking cool. But, yeah, shit. It's interesting. Not the aspect of celebrity, but the aspect of, of seeing someone in the wild that you appreciate what they've done and you're a fan of what they've done. It, that's, I, 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 don't know. I like that shit. I think shit is cool. I feel like I have another funny one. I feel like I have another one that's that's funny, but I can't remember it. Oh, I ate with Pat Smear once. That was weird. I ate it with Pat Smear at IHOP. The one on Santa Monica, Santa Monica Boulevard. The one that's right by... Um, um, what's that place called? Barney's Beanery. Yeah. So I ate with Pat Smear once, and him and I talked about uh, having a big fear of flying. Oh, wow. And I was like, this is 98. It's like four years after Kurt kicked off. That was interesting. He was really nice. That was cool. But yeah. This show's turning into a regular old TMZ. Seeing people from Tim and Eric in person kind of blows my mind. I've seen <laughs> yeah. the extras of, of Tim and Eric before the ones in the wild. Get you. <laughs> Those are pretty. The David Lee, the David Lee part appearances. Yeah. <laughs> My friend got to get drinks with Bobby Caldwell before he passed. Oh, that's and nice. At, like the Holiday Inn in Glendale, just like. The Holiday Inn in Glendale <laughs> seems like the place to be. <laughs> See Bobby Caldwell. What am I doing here? <laughs> that would be a great. What day. am I doing here? Hang on, you guys. I should be at the Holiday Inn in Glendale. Well, Bobby Caldwell. They probably get a sick bar. I tell you what, I passed the Eagle Rock Inn Motel on the way here tonight. Man. Doesn't seem like the place to be. Oh. I tell you, I've been staying in this place, Eagle Rock. Yeah. I've yet to see this eagle or this rock. <laughs> I don't know what these people are talking about. 
I was born in a place called Fountain Valley, California. Is there a fountain in the valley? No fucking fountain, then there's no valley. What the hell are these people talking about? Okay, we talked about a bunch of silly stuff. I've stayed in so many hotel rooms in my life since going on tour in the very early 90s, starting in like 1990. But I always wonder, because I've stayed in so many hotels around the world, I always wonder if like I'm in a hotel where someone has committed suicide or someone's been killed. And in my case, it's a high likeliness that I've been in a bunch of hotels where some fucked up shit has gone down. Mm -hmm. That documentary is fucked up. Yeah. It's scary. Oh man, I should have told this story before, but I guess I'll have to save it after we play something else. I don't know what to play. Well, we can always go back to Tried and trusted Desmond Decker. I have a hard time. Uh, um, I have a hard time saying like this is what I'm gonna play and like writing out a thing like oh, this one because then it doesn't feel. Once I'm in here, like I'll listen to the music at home. It's like oh, this is good. This works. Like this. This would be great. But then once I'm in here and I played what I played, I'm like, ah, I don't know. I wanna I wanna do something different. I don't. Maybe I don't wanna do that. Bear with me. Bear grills. That's a good song. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good shit. Good shit. I think that worked. That was good to fill that zone. Not just fill it, but bring you a certain uh, tranquility of music aquarium. But yeah. You guys ever watch that, that documentary uh, um, that Ken Burns made on Vietnam? No. Man, son of a bitch. So if you don't know who Ken Burns is, Ken Burns is a man with a funny haircut that makes documentaries for PBS. And uh, knowing about Ken Burns it will add to your life. It really will. He is just incredible. Like, the man has made... <sighs> he's... He made a he made a documentary about baseball. Now I love baseball, but I can't watch modern baseball. I just I, I love that the act of baseball. But again, I'm not gonna watch modern baseball. But he made about a eight hour documentary on baseball. And he made from the beginning all the way through, like hello. Sorry. <laughs> but uh and then he made a documentary about jazz, and he made a, a documentary about country music that's actually really fucking good, if you can believe that. Like, it's it's really well done. But this dude, Ken Burns, made a documentary about the Vietnam War. And again, it's about five, six hours long. It's incredible. Like, I fucking cried. I cried twice watching it. Like, you don't watch Ken Burns shit? You don't know about Ken no, Burns? I, you know, I, I've always known... Not judging. Name. No, no, I know. I'm, I'm fucking blown. I've known his name because of the Ken Burns effect. Like, he's... He's the guy. He's the guy. He's the fucking Berea. guy. I, yeah. I haven't given him his... Well. Where he, he focused in on photos and then pulled back because he does a documentary on the Civil War and... and it, again, like, someone told me that the, I became such good friends with the people that worked at that restaurant, Lucky Strike, that I talked about earlier, where I became such good friends with them. I would send their kid, I would send their their nephews and whatnot shoes and skateboards because I was so close to them. I'd be at Lucky Strike every day, and um, the restaurant that's no longer there on uh, Grand Street in New York. But a couple people that worked there were like, "Hey, Ken Burns was here." I was like, "Oh man, like." Fuck, I missed it. I missed meeting the guy. I don't know. What, I would talk to him, but like, I man. I don't know about the haircut. No, it's, he finally changed his haircut. For years and years, he had this haircut of a person that would belong to Heaven's Gate. <laughs> like, he, he looks like he's wearing a wig. He, he, he had a haircut that looked like he belonged to a cult for a long time. But he thinks he's like Paul McCartney or something. No. He just, he's a nerd. Like, he just, in the best possible sense of the word. But man, that Vietnam documentary, stop laughing. That Vietnam documentary, it, it made me cry twice. It was fucking fucked up. It was so good. It was so, so good. Like, I can't believe this man's done what he's done. It's just so, so great. Like, the, the films that he's made, and it's epic. And it's all on PBS. Like, is PBS also the name of, like, that Chicago affiliate that plays, like, Full House and shit? I'm talking about public broadcasting yeah. station. I think that's the low Right, 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 right. UPN? PBS is fantastic. Yeah, PBS, I, I give them money. I give money to PBS. <laughs> like, I love PBS. Yeah, it's so epic. And my, my good friend Dash Snow, he also was super into PBS. We would watch PBS together. And then, coincidentally, the documentary on Dash ended up coming out on PBS through Cheryl, which was That's insane. so cool. But yeah, shit. I'll tell you this. I'm going to link this into something else. Um, but again, Ken Burns, it's good to know this man's name. He makes these films 
that are so long and so epic and so informative that it'll just it'll add to your life it's like being alive is so fucking weird and insane and for to have someone break things down into such idiosyncrasies and so compartmentalized for our brains to process is just such a fucking <laughs> I've never said this before in my life it's such a gift holy shit <laughs> fucking Ken Burns what a good dude so I was uh, I went to Oregon to I believe sign the deal with Adidas and I stopped working for Vans Actually, that's not correct. I, I went to... Well, I guess it is, because that's how that... Sorry, forgive me. So, I'm in Oregon, and... The guy that booked the flight through Adidas, and I'm up there, and we kind of agreed with everything, and um, I ended up stopping working for Vans and doing design and whatnot and then I was going to transfer over to doing to working for Adidas and the dude who was making the flights I thank him to this day I forget his name forgive me but he had said like hey get ready for your flight tomorrow I said yeah I'm all ready whatever whatever and so I went to the airport and I tried to do the I'm 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 very minimal. I've been around the world a bunch of times and I'm minimal about the way I pack and the way I travel. So I only have a small bag. So I'm trying to do the uh check-in at the kiosk like on your own. I don't need to interact with another human to get on the plane. And uh I couldn't check in. And so I go wait in the line and whatever and a, this young man comes up to me and it just so happens, he knows who the hell my dumbass is. He's like, hey, Dill, like, da da da. I was like, oh, hey, how you doing? He works for fucking Delta or whatever. I was like, well, thank you. It's very strange being quasi known. It's a strange thing. It's, a, it's hard to explain. It's like, I'm not a fucking celebrity, but it's strange being quasi known. Like, I'll, it happens kind of often, which is strange, where. I'll just be walking down the street, and I'll hear someone say, Hey, do! I think it's one of my friends or whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And so I turn around. It's like just some dude driving by in a car like, what's up? <laughs> like, okay, cool. And, it, and that's nice. That's totally nice. Totally cool. Thank you. But it's a, it's a strange feeling. So the young man helping me at the, at, the, at the Portland airport, and I said, yeah, I'm trying to check in on the thing and whatever, but it's not doing the thing. He's like, well, show me the thing. And I'm showing him. And he says, yeah, your flight's tomorrow. I said, oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. And he was such a nice kid. And so I went outside, and I went into the taxi line, and I got a taxi, and I said, will you take me to this place called Astoria? And it's about a two-hour drive from the Portland airport. And Astoria is where they film Goonies and whatnot. And uh, I always wanted to go there. And, and so I got a taxi. The first taxi wouldn't take me. He's like, you're fucking crazy. I'm not taking you two hours to Astoria. But, you know, that's my life. I love doing shit like that. Like, people spend their money on Ferraris and Lamborghinis. I like to spend my money on going to weird places by taxi. That's my thing. And so I went there, I spent a few days there, and then I, I started like climbing down the coast, and I went to Lincoln City, and I went to all these different places, and I knew I had to be in San Francisco for a certain engagement, uh, business-wise, whatever, work-wise, by a certain date. And, um, oh, but that has nothing to do with it. But anyhow, so I did the thing in San Francisco, and... I'm taking, like, taxis and trains going down the coast to go back down to Ventura, where I was living at the time. And um, I was in SF, and when I'm in SF, I never, I, I just, I love SF, 
And in the 90s, growing up and like seeing like all that fucking twist graffiti and seeing like orphan shit and it was so epic. It was just so, and MQ, like it was so sick seeing all that shit and it was so great. But as I got older, in my 30s, I didn't want to stay in SF. I want to stay in this little, little place called Pacifica. If I'm going to have to do things in SF, like, whatever. I was going to the opening of the Supreme Store. I had to be, you know, as part of my job, which is not my job anymore. But that's what was going on. And so I'm in Pacifica, and I'm staying there, and I went to the thing, and everything happened, and the store opened, and we all high-fived, and fucking whatever. And um, so I was looking at the map on my phone, and... I've only had an iPhone for about six years. And so this is new to me. So I'm looking at the map, and I see this town. So I, I, I took a taxi from Pacifica to Half Moon Bay. And I knew that Half Moon Bay was pretty epic. So I looked up on Hotels.com, and it said the deal for the day for Hotels.com was, like, this is usually $700, but... Tonight, it's only 250 And some, like, Oprah Winfrey, like, resort. Yeah. I was like, fuck it, yeah. And I was smoking lots of weed at the time, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to get stoned and fucking go to the bar and watch the basketball game and, like, what? <laughs> so, and I did that. And they had a balcony and whatever, and you weren't supposed to smoke weed there or smoke, but I, of course, did that because I'm an asshole and that's what I do. And um, so... I wake up the next day and I look up where I want to go south because I'm heading back to Ventura, but I want to just keep going by train or by car. And so I see this little town that I've been to before called Pescadero. And I find this restaurant that's over 100 years old called the Something Tavern. I'll, f I'll figure it out in a second, but Something Tavern. But it's over 100 years old. I thought, fuck, I want to go there. So I'm new to the Uber thing. I call the Uber. The Uber comes, and it's a really epic, uh, really epic dude. I totally forget his name, but he was a professional uh, uh, soccer player in Brazil. And so the whole time I'm talking to him about being a pro soccer player in Brazil, and now he's living in Northern California and has kids, whatever, and him and I are just talking, and I'm telling him about professional skateboarding, whatever, and we're just going back and forth talking about being former pros or whatever. And he drops me off. And so where he drops me off, we're, we're, we're on Pacific Coast Highway. And he goes left. And he goes way up this road to this old restaurant. And there I am. And, and I say, well, thank you so much, man. Nice to talk to you. And, da -da -da. and uh, so he drops me off. And so I go in this restaurant. This over 100-year-old restaurant. I love shit like that. Like, trust me. Once you cross 37, you guys are going to love shit. Like, you're, you're going to go to museums more. You're going to love going to an old restaurant. Like, trust me. It, it changes. For, for the good. Uh, you're not chasing pussy. You're chasing <laughs> memories and whatever. But, uh, so I'm in the restaurant, and they're, 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 uh, Special is this split pea soup and some fish dish or whatever, and I got it, and I got iced tea, and and I think I had like a beer, and and then I'm I'm finished with my experience with this old restaurant, and I tell the the bartender I said I'm gonna just go outside and smoke, I'll be right back, like don't you know I'm not leaving, and this is like two p.m. And so I go outside, and I notice that my phone has no reception whatsoever. And I thought, oh, wow, I'm, I'm really out there. And so I go back in, and I talk to the waitress, and I said, hey, my phone doesn't have any reception. Like, I got dropped off here. And right when I said that to her, she was like, wait, you got dropped off here? And you don't have a way home? I said, no, I'm traveling like, down the coast. She said, there's no taxis there's no uber there's no nothing 
I said, oh, well, that's a problem. <laughs> Fuck. So there's a gas station across the street. So I go across the street to the gas station, and uh, uh, lo siento, me, espanol, is muy mal. So my, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dumb American. And so the, dude, the gas station, he's Mexican, and he doesn't speak much English, and I'm trying to say, like, if you know someone who can drive me to the next town down south, I'll give you money. And he was super cool, but he was just like, yeah, no. I don't know no one. Like, I'm just working. I said, I'm sorry to bother you. Totally cool. And so I go back in the restaurant, and I say to the waitress, I say, how far did I get driven on just that road from PCH to here? She goes, that's about two miles. And I say, well, how far is the nearest town, like, going south on PCH? And she says, like, 25 miles. <laughs> so, oh, shit. Son of a bitch. I fucking really did it. I've screwed the pooch. What am I going to do? So I said, fuck it. I got my little duffel bag. There's a bottle of wine in there. I got my weed. I don't smoke weed anymore. Um, and I bought a, like I bought a medium-sized bottle of water from the the, the gas station. And I thought, fuck it, here I go. So I start walking, and I'm in dress shoes, and uh, like nice button-up FA shirt we made a while ago. We'll show photos. I'm gonna find the photos. Because it's funny to see how I ended up looking. It was a, it, it's like a 13 mile walk. But again, it was hot. It was an October day, but it was hot. And I started walking. So I start walking for the restaurant, down the road, going west to hit PCH and then walk PCH. And I don't know what I thought. I don't know if I thought I was going to walk 24 miles, but I was like, fucking, I was up for it. Fuck it. Like, let's see. And so I start walking the road, and, like, that's already two miles. I'm like, all right, shit. And so I wait at PCH, and I wait for the cars to go by. And it's PCH and the ocean. That's the end of the line. And so I cross PCH, and I start walking on the, the right-hand shoulder, and there's just fucking semi trucks, just phew, phew, like passing me, and it's me. Sand trees, like just inches away from these semi trucks. I'm like, fuck, it was gnarly, and I'm in fucking dress shoes. Again, this is all my stupid fault, but this is the way I live my life. It's all happenstance and by the seat of my pants and whatever. So I got myself in this situation. I'm gonna enjoy it, but I got legitimately scared when like cars are passing me super fast and there's nowhere to walk except for this thin line between me the trees and the beach and pch so i keep going keep going keep going i stop sometimes smoke a joint under a shade whatever and luckily the day before was super fucking hot the day i did this was like quasi hot so i'm walking i'm walking i'm walking and i thought about I thought about hitchhiking, but at this point, I had taken the the the, f the fancy button-up shirt off of me, and I wrapped it around my head in a turban, and I had my sunglasses on, and the I had a duffel bag, small duffel bag, but the the straps had become so uh, wedged into my my top of my shoulder blades. Uh that I ended up taking a pair of underwear and putting it between them so it wouldn't rub on it because it was starting to like, out. like almost bleed. Oh, and so I'm fucking like the sun, everything. And so now I'm just a dude walking down the highway with fucking sunglasses on and a turban of a, of a fancy button up shirt and no shirt and underwear under his duffel bag shoulders and dress shoes like what the fuck is this weirdo doing you're looking wild like why is he walking down the highway Time traveler. and again like i said it's like a third time i walk whatever but i'm walking i'm walking i'm walking and in my mind 
I'm thinking, this woman told me 24 miles to the next town, like before, right before Santa Cruz, between Pescadero and Santa Cruz. Like, it might be something like 20, 24 miles. So I'm like, fuck it. Maybe I can do this. It's only 2 p.m. So I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And um, taking breaks, drinking water, smoking my joint and whatever. And then I'm walking in the road, the, the PCH started, and this, I couldn't have picked a more uh, 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 a picturesque, beautiful setting. Like, that strip of PCH is abandoned. Like, I saw fucking uh, uh, seals and dolphins and, and, and beautiful foliage and flowers. And like, if you're walking on the, the right uh, 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 shoulder of, of PCH between that stretch, like, you're in the middle of nowhere and your phone doesn't work and it, it's actually beautiful and so I'm telling the story like it was actually beautiful but I was worried like son of a bitch I'm gonna have to walk 20 miles so I'm going and I just didn't have the gall within me to be like yeah I'm gonna stick my thumb out like who's gonna pick me up I look like a fucking weirdo and like I have tattoos all over my if, if I had a football jersey on that's where all my tattoos are they're all over my chest and everything. It's like, I look like a weirdo. So I didn't even want to try to bother someone like, please pick me up. And then also I thought I could do it. So I kept walking and walking and I get to the stretch of where the PC8 starts to bend to the left and I see a lighthouse. I see this lighthouse in the distance. And I said, fuck. And I think it was a Sunday. I'm walking, I'm walking. And I'm getting closer to the lighthouse. I'm getting closer to the lighthouse. And I see a little pickup truck at the base of the lighthouse. So the lighthouse is off PCH to the right, like kind of in a little bit. Not very far, but some of it. So I was like, fuck, all right. I hope someone's there. And so <laughs> this is me, my head wrapped in my button-down turban and my dress shoes. And I had taken my socks off because my feet started to, to, to hurt from something with my socks. And I know it doesn't make any sense, but somehow my feet felt more comfortable in my dress shoes without the socks walking this distance. So I go down to the lighthouse and I knock on the door of the lighthouse. And this is probably about 4 p.m. And the guy, this older guy, probably about 65, he opens the door And he looks at me like, what the fuck do you want? Like, what are you doing here? I said, hey, I got dropped off at Pescadero at that old restaurant. And I walked to here. He's like, wait, 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 wait. You walked to here from such and such tavern? I said, yeah, like, I wanted to go there because I saw that it was the oldest restaurant. And he's like, he was so bewildered by me. He's like, wait. So what are you doing? I said, I, I'll, look, I have money. And I pulled out money out of my pocket. I said, I'll give you $100 if you drive me to Santa Cruz. And he goes, dude, he was so freaked out by me and, like, annoyed and, and kind of just, like, dismissive. He goes, go sit over there. And there was, like, a, 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 like a picnic bench. So go sit over there. I got more to do. And I'll deal with you when I come out. And I showed him the money, like, I'll give you money. And he was cool enough. I said, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so I go sit on the picnic bench, and I smoke a cigarette and whatever, whatever. And he comes out and it's like, so you walk from there? Like, what are you doing? I was like, well, I do this. And like, whatever, I'm, like, I'm pro skateboarder. And like, this is my, my life. And I, I don't make plans much. I just do shit. And like, I thought, I don't know. And I got there, there was no service. And he said, shit. I'll give you a ride to Santa Cruz. I live near Santa Cruz. I said, I'll give you a hundred bucks. He goes, you don't have to. That's, that's fine. And so we got in his car, his pickup, his old pickup, and we started going. And I, the first thing I said was, wow, you work at the lighthouse. That's, that's pretty cool. And the rest of the ride for 20 some odd miles 
was him complaining about working at the lighthouse and it was complete bullshit and it's working for the state and he didn't like it and and I just listened to what this guy had to say and he was a bit of of a curmudgeon but I was so thankful to get the ride and uh, I looked up once I got service on the phone, I looked up a, a, a motel in Santa Cruz where I would be spending the next night. But then I thought, Justin Strubing's dad Skateworks. owns a skate shop called Skateworks. Like, I want to go see Justin Strubing's dad. I love Justin Strubing. So, of course, like, so I said, hey. But he dropped me off at the motel and I found out the, that I, fe- I saw that the motel was super close to Skateworks. And so I, I ended up giving him the destination, whatever, whatever. And uh, as we're pulling to Santa Cruz, like, this guy's still kind of like, kind of whatever. And, I, I, and, you know, I didn't want him to be bummed about our experience together. And I said, do you smoke weed? He goes, yeah. I was like, okay. here. So when we pulled into the parking lot, I gave him, like, a nice amount of weed and 100 bucks. And he's like, you don't have to do that. I go, you didn't have to do what you did for me. Like, you saved me from walking, like, instead of like 13 miles, like 25 miles. So thank you. And so he dropped me off and I checked in and put my stuff away and I walked to Skateworks, which is Justin Stripping's dad's shop. And uh, Justin's dad was working and I told him the whole story and we sat and talked for a long time and he invited me to like dinner at this house and whatnot. not. And I said, well, thank you. I'm just gonna spend the night walking around Santa Cruz going to bars. <laughs> Man, wow! So the the lighthouse was called Pigeon Point Lighthouse, and it was a good experience, man. It was really cool. It was really, it was really cool. I'm I'm so glad that it happened, but in the moment, I was freaked out. Like, oh shit! Like, I'm gonna have to walk all this way. But yeah, long story. Long story. But yeah, I suppose I should play this song in a commemorance of my uh, my long walk.
myself on the action replay Hope I get there right on time Action. Got to do it pretty soon For fear of aerial warfare Right here in your room Switch on Start negotiation Off. Baby, baby, I love you so I do my spoken word on the water in the nature when you Turn think about being mind. human. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hope you like it when I get silly because I certainly get silly. Son of a bitch. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So yeah, ow. That was my elbow. I hit my funny bone. Apparently it's funny. I thought it was serious the whole time, and then I hit it. And it's like, no, bitch, we're funny. Get ready. Cat Williams lives inside of my elbow, apparently. It's my funny bone. But, yeah. I hope you, I hope you've enjoyed what, um, what we've laid out for your synapses here. Hope you've liked it. How long? How long have we been going? Two hours. That's good. I always like to do more. I want to do a ten-hour show one day. I'll have to get back to taking ecstasy <laughs> from my 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 youth to do a ten-hour show, and I'll play a bunch of crazy shit. Born Slippy. Might play some Born yeah. Slippy. Might play some Carl Cox. <laughs> Go real crazy. Seriously, but yeah, man. Here we are. Here we are floating through space and we've done this thing. But yeah, shit. I liked it so far. And I hope you've liked all our silly meanderings on life and what life is and what life isn't. And yeah, shit. Sure. 10.28 p.m. here in East Los Angeles. 69 degrees. It's heating up out there, guys. It really is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's certainly getting warmer. I don't like the warm. I'm kind of over summer. I don't, I don't want it. 
Like, the older I get, I don't want summer. It's like, it's just so... It's so invasive. It's like, oh, God, it's going to be, like, really fucking hot. And I can't wear my jacket anymore? Fuck. Son of a bitch. This is old guy problems. I don't want the heat. Fuck that. Maybe I'll go to Australia. It's hot as fuck there. No, not in really? not in April, May, June, July. It's a, it's a, and not to question well, you know, like not to question world your world. intelligence whatsoever. But that's the other been. side. It's the other side of the hemisphere. So oh, when it's summer here, yeah, totally. Um, but when it's summer here, it's winter there. So I can go to Colombia and I can go to if I want to experience the non-summer I can go to those places but. I just figure it's always fucking hot there <laughs> it kind of seems like it <laughs> you know. but it's not like Hawaii it's not like Hawaii where it's always uh, uh, the temperature's always a bit uh, aloha uh, warm but yeah yeah no t- like, speaking of s- stupid like not <laughs> My my own my own stupid, not your stupid age. Like today, <laughs> when that when Shit. when that super nice woman at the coffee shop said, "Do you want to look at the, the you want to look at the, the the eclipse?" I said, "Yeah, I don't know how to do it." She's like, "Take these, and I, you can take them outside and do it while we make your coffee." I said, "Cool." When I did it, and I was looking, and I walked back in, and I just woken up. Whatever, no excuse for this kind of stupidity. I said out loud to her as she was making the coffee, I said, what planet is going over the sun? Like, is that? And I went to say the moon. She goes, the moon. I was like, oh, man, I feel like a dumbass. (laughs) (laughs) I felt so stupid. And she's like, she's good looking, and she seemed to like me. I was like, oh, man. Maybe I blew it. She probably thought it was cute. Maybe I don't know, but I don't know. It's the same thing where like you you you're checking in at the airport when you do check in with a person, and they say, "Have a nice flight," and you say, "You too." <laughs> Next time you fly somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, two hours in. Fuck it. Fuck it. We're doing it live. No, but um, two hours in. Two hours in. What 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 else do I have? What else do I have to offer to you in the world? Let me see. Let me see what we can do. But yeah, I tell you what. From my friends and people that I'm associated with, not saying that they're not my friends, but people who I don't... Sorry, I just had to go pee real quick in the glass. Um... I've had lots of people hit me up and tell me, fuck, they like the show. And I just think, really? So you're you're attracted to stupidity? <laughs> That's amazing. But yeah, I've had a lot of people that are friends and associates and whatnot. And, and a, a, kind of a more than, a, not bragging, but a more than a few people on the streets tell me they like the show. It's like, wow. Son of a bitch. Okay, you like it. That that's encouraging, cause it's it's a. Uh, it's not that doing the show um, is difficult. It's um, just showing up and uh, starting and getting into it. To where it's like you're filling dead air and it's like is this stupid <laughs> you're doing it and, and then you're playing the songs which the songs are great but then sometimes youtube cancels the songs you're like fuck because you think it was a it was a good episode and it all flowed very, very well but then youtube gets in the way and they're like no and but yeah i don't know i don't know Stick with us. More to come. Certainly not your average girl 
That was Casper Combs with Bobby, King of Boys Town. I love Cass. He's a great dude. Man. What did you say? That's number eight we've done in 2024? Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, again, I always say this, but... I hope you liked it. I think I liked it. It most certainly was uh, not as uh, energetic as it was last episode. But hey, it's all human, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm here doing this thing like I'm a fucking human as you're a human. Like, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to make this thing happen. And again, we're not selling you nothing. Like, it just is what it is. I'm just trying to do the thing. And, uh, you know, as a human speaking to another human, like, you can, it's so human, I think you can actually hear my stomach making the sounds it makes. Because uh, our microphone is so good. But uh, remember, if you want to be, like, clean, like, really clean, like, clean as I get, got it. You gotta stick a little bit of uh, your fingers in that hole with some soap. I'm just saying. No one talks about it. But it's the real truth of being human. Like, you gotta stick just a little bit up that hole, man. You got, like, what you got? You got fucking, like, you got like six uh, holes in your face. Because your eyeballs are holes. They really are. And there's your nose. And there's your mouth. So what's that? That's five. But that main one that be putting out the swamp, yeah, fucking do it, man. Fucking get that shit clean. Like, don't be going out in society, like, lackluster. Like, get in there. Get it clean. Don't be fucking around. Like, I'm so freaked out by humans that don't clean themselves well enough that, like, it, there it is again, my, my belly making noises. But uh, if I pee and I know I'm going to a grocery store where I might hand someone something, I'm cleaning my hands beforehand. Why wouldn't you? Don't be gross out there. Like, don't be gross out there. Stick a little bit of your fingers in the hole. You know what I'm talking about. With some soap. Get that shit fucking immaculate. It's a, it's a good process. I'm just... I'm only saying this because I'm afraid that uh, most people don't do it. You gotta wash your ass. That's right. Fuck. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you've liked the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know the last episode I was a little... I don't know. I was a bit... Um, who knows? But I, I said something along the lines of like, I don't care. Fuck it. Fuck you. Fuck everything. I don't like... I don't care if you don't like it. Okay, maybe I take that back. Of course, we want you to like it. It's an experience, you know. We're human. Like, I'm here. I'm listening to music and playing it for you and whatnot. And of course, there's a certain aspect of 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 my brain and personality that wants you to like it. So, yeah, fuck. If you don't, you don't. If you do, you do. But again, the people that have told me that they like it, it makes me so happy. It's so cool. Because obviously what we're doing, we're not we're not making a fucking podcast. We're not trying to get sponsored by Manscaped. We're just doing it. Just like just trying to make shit that people might be interested in. And if you are one of those people well, thank you for being here. And we're so 
me and the whole crew were very thankful. But yeah. Once again, here we are. We did what we did. 10.48 p.m. 68 degrees in East Los Angeles. And we will be taking you out with some slower aspects of our previous, previous, previous music. Give me the time to find what the fuck I'm talking about. Mm-mm. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time. We love you. Do we love them? So much. I, I'm just so afraid of people being so... Like like nowadays in, in the modern uh, world, like everyone's a goat. Everyone's a legend. Like, I love you. Like, it's all facetious. It's all bullshit. Like, everyone's a goat. Fucking, if everyone's the goat, then no one's the goat. That's all bullshit. I hate that shit. We love you. It's, oh, it's so lackluster. I mean, but if you listen and you hear and you. you're queer or you're not queer or you're with us or you're not with us or you're on the fence, well, fuck it. We still have time and we still support you so fuck it we support the unsupported we support the non non non-human identifying idiosyncratic idiosyncratic (laughs) cryptid idiosyncratic I'm gonna invest all my money in the idiosyncratic (laughs) We're being silly. But yeah, thanks folks. I appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you again. Bye.
Turn off your mind, relax, and float downstream. It is not dying. It is not dying. Lay down all thoughts. Surrender to the void. It is shining. It is shining. Yet you may see. But you 
What the hell do you want? 